So what we're going to do, right, is I want to walk through question number three and four on that first lab. Because while you only took one set of data, the analysis of this lab is kind of a little longer than the other one. Because the other one, literally, you're just finding, you know, percent error. So for this one, um, there's a lot of requirements in terms of drawing. So the first thing they want you to do is using measured values, construct a scale diagram showing the three forces as arrows on a separate sheet of paper with length of each arrow is proportional to the magnitude of forces, and each arrow points in the same angular direction as indicated on the force table. So the first thing we're going to need to know is we, we need basically six data points, right? So we need, um, we need to figure out what is FGA, what is FGB, and what is FGC, um, right? Those are the three things. Now, what I know, I know that FG any FG, a weight, is going to be equal to mg. That's the equation that we learned about last week using the gravitational field strength and the mass, right? Um, so in this situation, right, to find these three things, since we had grams in the lab, we convert grams to kilograms because our standard unit for mass is going to be kilograms, and we times it by 9.81. So if I had a 200 gram weight on FGA, that's equal to 0.2 kilograms. Remember, you just divide by 1,000 times 9.81 meters per second squared. And then the second one is going to be 0.15 kilograms times 9.81. And then meters per second squared. And then our last one in this situation is going to be 0.12 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. Um, can someone with a calculator put that together for me? No, 1.96. So the first one's what? 1.96. 1.96 newtons. Um, 1.47 newtons. 1.18. Mm -hmm. 1.18 newtons, right? So these three, these three numbers are important because they are going to tell us the magnitude of our vector. And if we're doing a scale diagram, the magnitude is going to correspond with the length of the vector. So the next thing we need to do, right, is we want to make the scale diagram using this. Because I know at the 196 Newton one is at, um, that's going to be at 49 degrees according to my uh, diagram. This one was 267 degrees. And this one was 181 degrees. So the next thing we need to do is figure out an appropriate scale, right? So to do this, can we please stop talking? It makes it a little hard to focus, right? Thank you so much. So first thing we need is a coordinate grid. So I'm going to create just um, a coordinate system on the board here, right? It's going to look like that. Where is my x-axis? And it would help if I had a triangle. The triangle makes it better. My y-axis is going to look, um, you know, like this. Thank you. Right. So the y-axis is going to be looking like this. Next, we need to decide on a good scale. Well, my biggest one that I have. Right, my biggest one is 1.96, so maybe I could set it so that, um, let's say, 2 newtons is equal to 4, let's, what's the scale? Let's say 2 newtons is equal to 4 decimeters, right? So I'm going to set it so 2 newtons is equal to 4 decimeters, right? So now if I want to convert these newtons into decimeters, right, I would take um, for FGA, that's going to be 1.96 newtons times, now I want to convert newtons to decimeters, so the way to do that, I'm going to say, I want newtons to be on the bottom, so if I take this and I divide both sides by two newtons, my conversion factor is going to become uh, 1 is equal to 2 decimeters per newton. So, all I got to do here is I'm going to take 1.96 newtons and I times that by 2 decimeters per newton. And so, what's 1.96 times 2? 
3.92 decimeters. So now this is going to be the length of my scale drawing so that when I draw it, it'll be exactly that distance. And I can do it the same, FGB, that's going to be 1.47 newtons times 2 decimeters per newton. Gives us 2.94 decimeters. And FGC is going to be point, no, but we've got 1.18 newtons times 2 decimeters per two newton. Point, gives us 2.36. 2.36 decimeters. Great. So, step one, right? Create the scale. Step two, convert your newtons into a scale that's appropriate for your paper. You can make it whatever you want for the size of the, the paper you're going to use. Now that we have three measurements, all we got to do is put it on our coordinate grid matching exactly the angles that are given up there. So FGA was at 49 degrees. So you're going to take the protractor, put your zero exactly on the center of your axis, mark off if this is 30, 40, 49 degrees is right up there, like so. Then with the ruler, my, I'm going to draw that one so that it is 3.92 decimeters. So, that's 1, 2, 3, and we said 0.92, right? 3.92 is right to there, right? So this vector is FGA. Our second vector, angle FGB, is going to be at 267 degrees. So this is where we got to be a little clever. So I know this is going to be 90 degrees. This is going to be 180 degrees. I know this is 270 degrees. So if I want to have it at 267, it's going to be 3 degrees shy of 270. So I put my protractor right uh, I can even do it like that. Uh, it's going to be a little tricky, so we're going to have to ballpark it just a little bit. But if this is 90 and this is uh, 85, so 97 is probably right. 87 is probably right there, approximately, or pretty close. And then that second vector is 2.94 decimeters away. So we take a ruler. There we go. One, two, two point nine four is about there, right? So that's our second vector, that's FGB. All right, so we got FGA, we have FGB. And the last one on this list is FGC, which is at 181 degrees, which is, I mean, I can just kind of guess. It's, it's going to be literally that, like, one degree off of the axis, right? Um, and that one is going to be uh, 2.36 decimeters. So, lining it up exactly as best we can. Now, I'm doing this with a marker, so it's going to be a little not as perfect as you would like since you're going to be using a pencil. Just be really careful when you use a pencil so that you're not, you know, making it too messy. Um, and so this is going to be now 2.36. So we go over uh, 1, 2, and 2.36 is like right there. Right? You can barely tell that it's off of 180, and this one is going to be um, F. G, C. Okay? Questions about how to draw it? Yeah. No, the circle is not necessary. We're just representing the forces. And remember, what we're, we're assuming that we're not doing it in a ring, we're doing it from the center of the ring, because technically the center of the ring is the center of the mass of the ring, right? So you're, our forces are coming out of the center. So you don't even need to draw the ring when you do this, this diagram. All right? Um, fine, okay, so now that we did, so that's number three, done, check. We did everything that's needed for number three, that pointed in the correct angular directions. If you want to be, you know, extra fancy, you could label it and say this was 181 degrees, 
This was 267 degrees, and this one was, whatever that was, 49 degrees, right? Okay, so now that you've got this, the next thing you want to do is find the components, right? So you need to find, use law, law cosine or component method to calculate the expected resultant. So to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to take each one of these vectors and break them down into the two components. The y component, the, the y component which goes up and down, and the x component. If you wanted to visualize it, so you kind of understand what I'm talking about, what I want to know is I want to know how much of FGA points in the x direction, we could call that FGAX, and I want to know how much of FGA is pointing in the vertical direction, we can call that FGAY, right, if you want to do it that way, and you do the same for all the others, I'm not going to redo that again, but that's the gist of it. So, we make a table. X and Y components, like such, right? And then this is going to be FGA, this is going to be FGB, this is going to be FGC, right? Um, and just so you remember, right, if you want to find uh, FG, I'm just going to show you down here. So FGAX is equal to FGA times cosine of our angle. And FGAY is going to be equal to FGA times the sine of theta. And remember, this is the same thing as AX is equal to A cosine theta, AY is equal to A sine theta. We, we use that on the reference table. So this is where I'll need some calculator help. So what is the cosine of 49 degrees times, what was this thing? This was 196 newtons. 1.96 newtons times cosine of... Uh, 49. So take cosine of 49 times it by 1.96. Yes? 1.285. Fine. Uh, Newtons. What about, so what would be the sine of 49 times 1.96? Nine newtons, right? And we really only need these two digits, so if you want to do three digits, it doesn't matter. Uh, now for the second one, the second one, which is FGB, right? Um, this one's a little more tricky, but we could probably say, okay, so if this is 100 and 267 degrees, um, we could find, if we find the cosine of that separation of three degrees, Right? Cosine of 3 degrees is going to point in the vertical direction. So what is, so we want the y direction. What's cosine of 3 degrees times uh, 2.9, no, not 2.9, 1.47. Cosine of 3 degrees times 1.47. Cosine of 3 degrees. Because our separation from this axis is 3 degrees. Cosine of 3 degrees times 1.47. Uh, 1.467 newtons, right? So what's sine of 3 degrees times um, 1.47? Uh, 0 0.076. 0 0.076. Now, now, this is where we need to be a little careful about sine. So this is the, the, the part that's directed downwards. I know, I switched it up on some of you. I, because 3 degrees is closest to this axis, and I want the part that's going this way, it, then this is the adjacent component, and so that's why I use cosine. I know it could have been consistent. But. So this is right, though. You could take the sine of, um, what would it be, 90 minus, not the sine of 87, and you'll get um, that either way. It would work, right? So, we have to be careful, though, about the direction, right? Is this one directed up or is it directed down? It's directed down. So, if this is positive, this one would have to be negative, negative right? And is this directed forward to the right or backwards to the left, this, this little teeny bitty one? Technically, it's, it's a little to the left, so we would say this is negative, right? Last but not least, because I'm really running out of time, 
Um, we look at this last one, which, I, you know what, I mean, it's one degree, so we could basically say it's, it's the same. I mean, if you wanted to be really careful about it, the whole thing is going to be in the x direction backwards, and that is going to be 1.18, more or less. So what, if you want to really check it, what's cosine of one degree times 1.18? Cosine of 1 degree times 1.18. 1 1.17, 1 1 right? So 1.17, just so we're exactly correct. What would sine of 1 degree times 1.18 give us? Probably, I guess, we... Zero what? Two. Two? Newtons. Now, last but not least, to find the resultant, I, yes, you just add them up in the vertical on both columns, right? So what are these three things when I add them up? What does it give me in the y direction? Add these three numbers up and, and what does it give us? Quickly. Point one four newtons. What are these three things when you add them up? And let's be careful. This is going to be a negative direction, right? Because it's backwards compared to forwards, right? So what's one point? 2a minus 0 0.07 minus 1.17. 0 0.039. 0 0.039. Now, check it out. Yeah. How about the y-axis for the 0 0.02? Because yeah, oh, the 0 0.02 should be, it's below the axis, so technically it's negative 0 0.02. So what is that, 1.12? Yeah. Now, check it out. This is barely anything. Why? Why? What should this be? What should, when I add these forces up, what should it equal? Zero. Zero. This is equilibrium. So when I add up all the components, I should get nothing at the end. So the fact that it's not zero means that the numbers that we are actually getting are not perfect. This is the margin of error that we're talking about in this laboratory. OK? Um, yeah, and so that's how you would find uh, the component method to find the resultant. Now, to find the resultant, I would say if this is Rx, that's Ry. To get the resultant, it's going to be resultant squared is equal to Rx squared plus Ry squared. 